The lights, the sounds, the cameras, the electricity. If you can feel it, hear it, see it, chances are an IBEW electrician built it. The members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 716 built the things that make Rice University and Houston great, and we want you to join us. Excellent training, fantastic benefits in retirement, and zero student loan debt. Build a better career. To find out more, visit IBEW716.net. Football fans are passionate, just like John Deere fans. And if you're a John Deere person, the name to know is Shoppas. In football, it's about calling the right place. The right call for John Deere equipment is Shoppas. Shoppas has the right size track from the compact 1000 series all the way up to the 6000 series with financing available. Shoppas has great prices on lawnmowers and gators too. A John Deere is more affordable than you think. Google Shoppas at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Shoppas, all things John Deere. The following is a presentation of the Rice Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield IMG College, welcome to Rice Owls Insider. Powered by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University in Houston for over 100 years. Rice Owls Insider is brought to you by The Parking Spot. A parking spot. We have airport parking covered. Now, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider. It is brought to us each and every week by IBEW Local 716, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 716, lighting up Rice University in Houston for over 100 years. Stay tuned for a great show again this week. Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach Mike Bloomgren joins me in moments to break down another unexpected off week, unfortunately, and a quick look ahead to those North Texas mean green. A basketball preview of sorts as Tina Langley and Scott Parra join us the next uh, two segments uh, during these uncertain times. And then I'll have a North Texas preview with their great announcer, Dave Barnett. But now Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach Mike Bloomgren. Coach, all things considered, how are you? Great. You know, uh, our team's healthy and working their butts off. Uh, our staff's good. My family's good. I mean, I, we have a lot of things to be thankful for. Uh, and someday we'll get to play a football game again. You're up there with so energetic, so so positive as far as the category of people I know. So h- how do you encourage and lead the guys in, in a tough time like this? Because it's, I mean, it's deflating at times. I can only imagine being on the inside like y'all are. Yeah, honestly, JP, it's uh, there are challenges to it, and there's real challenges in telling the kids. You know, when you get the news for the whether it was the first time or the second time, and and just like knowing the dejection that they feel and, and how much work they put in. So uh, I, I won't lie and make it seem like it's all roses, but the thing we talk about in this building is controlling the controllable. And so again, once that word comes down, we can take a little time and be upset about it, and then we better transition and move on to the next challenge. And uh, again, I'm so thankful for these coaches and these kids for the way that they do that. It's been a while since we've had uh, Mike, Mike Bloomgren book talk, I think when we went back to old Wild Wings shows. But have you read Atomic Habits? Have you read that? I have not. It looks awesome. It's fantastic. But the main genesis of it, and and you, without knowing it, kind of spurned me onto it with the process talk and everything about like kind of building a system. And that's what a lot of it is, just the daily habits they build up over time. I won't give the full book review, but it's a bestseller. It speaks for itself. But my main point in that long-winded question is to ask about like setting your process. I mean, in, in your philosophy, is it built for times like this? And how do you adjust when there are such uncontrollable things that make you change on the fly like this? Yeah, I think it is. I think the process is the process, as we all know, and it can't change. Like it has to be the same every week. And our kids understand that 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 means going to breakfast and then going to class and then going to COVID testing. And then when they get in this building, they've got to turn all of their attention and give all their energy to their coach. And then when we go on the field, we've got to have a great time playing this game and getting better, uh, continuing to get better every single day. So I think because we have that process in place and our kids understand the whys behind what we do and why we do it, uh, we've got a chance to, to get them locked in. But I'll be honest with you, I did have to, I did feel the need to encourage them more this week to trust that we're going to play a game and, and to don't let anything in their preparation, in their process, fall, uh, because we can't. We have to prepare the right way. We know how to do it now. 
And uh, that's been a great challenge that I, I issued to them. And so far they've answered. So it's been good. So normally during this real estate, we have time to say, hey, what did Austin Trammell do? What did Mike Collins do in X, Y, and Z game? But during the practices you've had the last couple of weeks, have you been able to gauge improvements from some guys, but, but you had that great showing against Southern Miss, but in, in the practice sessions, have you noticed improvement from guys? We have, you know, and, and that's another thing I wanted to make sure the guys understood is that everything we've done, although we didn't get the, the payoff, if you will, in, in the football game, everything we're doing is not for not like it's for gain and it is a gain. And we're learning more how to dive into that process. And, and for the young guys, they're learning how to get their study going for first and second down in the field then third down in the field and then red zone and, and so on and so forth and learning how to prepare in those areas. And, and then once again, like just the physical reps, like that's how you get better at football is by playing football. So uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm actually cliche and coming straight out of your atomic habits book, but uh, th those are just the things we believe in and the things we talk about. And so again, aside from the disappointment of not playing the game, we're able to move forward and we're able to start the next week and, and understand what this process looks like to prepare like a champion. And uh, I am really intrigued by your Atomic Habits book. I wish you would ask Tina Langley in, in her segment with you if she's read it, because she and I are like book club people. Like we uh, we have very similar interests in what we read and who we study. And uh, I'd, I'd love to know if she's read it yet. She hasn't, and, and not to spoil and ruin Christmas for everybody, but we, we tape these segments differently. I don't tape them live. It, it might be obvious already, but I turn that back around to you because she mentions you and her talk coming up next segment about the way you, you go about things. She routinely quotes uh, Dabo Sweeney and uh, his process based man mindset. So I'm, I'm kind of interested along with on campus, but just who do you draw on for some support? I, I, we had the storyline last year about you kind of going to Matt rule a lot. So are there any other coaches, different sports, uh, different levels that you kind of lean on this time? Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of people that you have to lean on in this crazy time. And, and you know, the easy ones for me are David Shaw and Derek Mason, the head coach of Stanford and Vanderbilt, respectfully. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, those guys just we're all going through very similar things. Manny Diaz is one of my best friends at coaching. We started coaching together. He and I talk, if not every week, every other week. Uh, Tina Langley on campus, she is my go to. Like we are if we're battling something with our own teams, it's, it's not out of the realm for a text or a call to come from one of us. Hey, how do you handle this? What have you done here? And I'm especially trying to be a resource for her and Coach Para with the COVID stuff and some of the things we think we figured out. But uh, Matt Rule texted me last Thursday and was just like, man, hate to hear it again, you know. And uh, so he's still keeping up with the Rice Owls, which means a lot to me. Yesterday, uh, the best offensive line coach to coach uh, in the NFL for, for eons was Dante Scarnecchia with the Patriots. And mm -hmm. he's now retired. And I had a ball question, so I reached out to him and just got a little sanity talk along with the football advice. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I lean on a lot of people, and we're so fortunate to have the people that will take our calls or call and check in on us. It means everything. Yeah, that's probably a whole other book series, podcast, like leaders leaning on other leaders. So it's refreshing that, of course, you do that too. But kind of getting to the moment at hand this week, you've got that rivalry with North Texas. I don't think I'm bold saying that because you've talked about with the other Texas teams and – my gosh, just last year's game alone proved that was a huge win for y'all last year. And just can, can you speak to Coach Luttrell and, and the kind of the, the rivalry that, that's really blossoming here the last few years? Yeah, North Texas, from the time we got in the conference, was the target, right? Because they had won the West right before we entered as a staff. And gosh, I got so much respect for him and how he coaches offense and uh, his mindset. Like, you know, one thing that I have no chance to beat Seth Luttrell in is a bench press contest right now. Like, he is going to smoke me. Uh, I think he's still benching over 400. So, uh, you know, but there's a lot of things that I enjoy, the competition back and forth with Seth. Uh, but more than anything, just have so much respect for their program. Now, as I look at this matchup, it's so intriguing to me because I think our defense is, has made no qualms about how good they want to be and how they want to be the top defense in this conference and what an opportunity we have before us when you're not only going against the number one offense in the conference, but the number two offense in the nation. And the leading receiver in the conference, who's up for the Blitnikoff Award, and Jalen Darden, a quarterback that runs a 10-3-100, so we can't let him get out. Uh, a nose guard like they have on defense, number 97, will be a great challenge for our offense. But there's all these challenges that are right there for us. And so as we look at this game, which, again, a Texas team in our conference, we do recruit against them. We do run into them on the road. So what a big deal this game can be for our program. we got to make it happen. 
Coach, thanks. We'll be talking uh, closer to that kick. I feel it. It is coming this week. Thank you so much. All right, JP. Have a great day. Right here, Coach. Atomic Habits, James Clear. Love it. There you go. Appreciate it. Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach Mike Bloomgren. Stay tuned. Coming up next, Tina Langley joins us here on Rice House Insider from Learfield IMG College. Even now, while we're distancing, your body needs to move. At Houston Methodist Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, our teams are ready with advanced technology and imaging to deliver custom treatment plans safely. And our minimally invasive procedures can help you heal faster. We have the expertise to keep you moving because every movement matters. Find the care you need at locations throughout Houston. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Time out. Smart Financial wants you to know that a good banking experience shouldn't feel like you're getting tackled. Since 1934, we have prided ourselves on providing hassle-free services with a game plan that focuses on people, not profits. If you live, work, or go to school at or around Rice University, visit smartcu.org to join our family and become a part of the winning team. Smart Financial, proud sponsor of Rice Athletics, federally insured by the NCUA. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider and the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider. Basketball season is nigh upon us. Sixth year women's basketball coach Tina Langley joining us in seconds. And men's coach Scott Perra will join us after that. And then I'll have a North Texas game preview with their esteemed announcer, Dave Barnett. Smart Financial's game plan is simple. People before profits, whether it's saving for retirement, finding your favorite car, or buying your dream home, we can help. Text RICE to 276-278 to find out how. And yes, basketball season is upon us. And sixth year, head coach of the RICE women's team, Tina Langley. Coach, how are you? <laughs> it's so good to see you without a mask. <laughs> Crazy, huh? It, yeah. uh it see, I was. Uh, I'm going to talk about this with Coach Para coming up. That talked to both of y'all. I think a one episode apart or so uh, back in the spring before the world really shut down, or right as it was shutting down. But t- tell us about the program and how these last few months probably have seemed like a long amount of time. But as you address it to the start of the season, uh, the start of the season's coming. So d- discuss kind of the walk up to the season as it's gone so far. Well, first, we're just so grateful for um, everything uh, that everyone has done uh, to help us reach this point, Uh, you know, from our uh, facilities people working so hard in the facilities and our athletic training staff and the doctors and everybody and our administration working so hard to make sure we could have a chance to play. And uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, I really didn't even know how to begin to thank our athletes for their resiliency and their uh, grit and um, the enthusiasm that they've shown as uh, we've begun to uh, to come back together and prepare. You're, you're juggling so many challenges that, that that a lot we'll never know about for this uh, different type of season. So how tough has that been? But the way I've, I've gotten to know you over the years as being so process oriented, this, this does seem like a good time for that type of mindset, mindset doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. I think... Um, you know, we have a theme this year that has really, um, I think, helped us approach the season. And uh, our theme is ready for the call. Uh, and there's so many ways to see that. But we introduced that talking a little bit about the military and how they train. And you never know when the call for battle is going to come in. And you have to be mentally and physically ready for that call. Uh, but we've also talked a lot lately about the preparation for life that gives us. Uh, you never know when you're going to get that phone call. Uh, You know, I just had a young lady that uh, coached at Maryland, got a very difficult phone call uh, that none of us want to receive. And um, I know her and I know um, the time that she spent as an athlete and the way she learned to handle adversity and the way she's lived her life will uh, continue to help her take that next step. Um, And as our team says, do the next right thing. Uh, And so, you know, we're going to get a lot of phone calls this year. We're going to get the uh, you know, the other team is not able to play and we're going to get the, we have a student, uh, you know, or staff or somebody might have COVID. Uh, we're going to just keep getting uh, potential uh, for, for those random calls. And so if um, if we do what we've always done and just done the next right thing, just do the next right thing. OK, here's what the information that we have um, and here's where we need to go from here. Uh, I think we learn an incredible life lesson 
um, in that, uh, you know, circumstances come about that you cannot uh, control. Uh, but what you can do is control how you respond, not react. And we talk a lot about the difference between reacting and responding. And so just so proud of the young women on our team and how they continue to respond um, to the adversity and also celebrate, you know, the amazing blessings we have of being able to be on the court together. And I mean, you know, like you said, months ago, we were confined to our homes uh, and now we're out there playing and uh, get to have some joy and music and they get to be without their masks for a few minutes as they compete against one another. And, um, you know, just so, so grateful, so grateful to Rice for giving us this opportunity. And um, we just want to continue to have our, our heart where it should be and, and be grateful um, and be ready for the call. So talk about the general excitement for the upcoming season, how those calls will come and they you'll, you'll still be able to play a lot of games, Lord willing. So what is the general excitement that you've talked about with the staff and uh, some of the things that y'all are looking forward to that, that fans will notice once you do get to start playing? Well, I think we've had great examples go before us in other sports. I mean, you know, just look at football and, and the, the way that they have handled the different calls that they have had throughout the season. And I think Coach Bloomgren has done a great job of, um, you know, really handling the different situations. And so, you know, we hope to handle things in similar manner um, so that we, uh, you know, are just prepared. And uh, there's a lot of things that bring excitement right now. You know, we've made a couple of calls to our first two games and they're still on. So <laughs> what a blessing. We're excited and uh, we're going to get to go out and compete. And, you know, while we know there's some things that um, maybe in, in past years uh, we haven't been able to do um, from a training standpoint, you know, everybody's in the same boat pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we've all kind of uh, reached this point a little bit differently, um, but we're all at the same point now. And so, um, you know, our team has been tremendous in um, the way they've uh, approached it from a mental aspect um, and also the way they physically started to prepare. Um, I think they understood we were going to have to train differently. And so um, they've done a great job with that. And so I think we're just excited for our first opponent uh, right now. That is Houston Baptist on the 25th at home. And so that's, um, that's going to be a lot of fun. And so entering season number six, um, how, how has the journey been for you and the staff and, and what's it been like to develop uh, such a consistent winning culture for y'all? Well, that's about the people in the program, you know, and we have just been so fortunate. First of all, to coach at Rice, uh, you get to recruit and hire the best character um, and, you know, incredibly intelligent people. And so, you know, I've been very fortunate to be surrounded by amazing young women and uh, great staffs. And, uh, you know, so I'm just so grateful for the people that have been a part of building this program and, um, you know, just excited to see where we can go from here. Can't wait, Coach. Um Thank you. Hopefully we'll get to chat a few times uh, during the season, uh, game at a time, as you said, and uh, let's let's get the season going. I can't wait. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. Always good talking to you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Tina Langley, six-year head coach of Rice Women's Basketball, will stay with the theme on the hardwood. Rice men's coach Scott Parrott joining us next here on Rice House Insider from Learfield IMG College. The members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 716 built the things that make Rice University and Houston great, and we want you to join us. Build a better career. To find out more, visit IBEW716.net. What do you do when you need safe, reliable corporate transportation? You go WIND. WIND Transportation is one of the largest group transportation providers in Texas, a leader in charters, shuttles, and special events of all sizes. Five people or 5,000. WIND offers customizable team transportation with a wide range of motor coaches, many buses, and vans. So, for safe, reliable corporate transportation, do like the owls and go WIND. Book at GoWIND.com. G-O-W-Y-N-N-E.com. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. You're listening to Rice Owls Insider. Let's rejoin J.P. Heath. Welcome back on Rice Owls Insider. We have head basketball coach of our Rice Owls, Scott Perra, with us. Coach, how are you? Good, J.P. Good to see you again. 
Yes, sir. I was telling somebody the other day, and this definitely fits with you too. Uh, we talked, what, a few months ago before everything kind of shut down. Uh, that seems like two years ago, though, now. So how, how have you and the staff been managing this uh, kind of infinite lasting uh, pandemic we've had here with the season nine upon us, too? Well, you know, it's certainly like nothing I've ever experienced or, 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 whatever have thought of experiencing in my, in my coaching career, let alone just in our general life, but the coaching aspect of it and trying to run a program offers a whole nother, you know, handful of, you know, issues that you need to deal with constantly. And that is just protocols, safety measures, um, thinking of things so far down the, the layers of this, um, to, to try and, you know, keep our guys healthy, <laughs> spaced away when we can, um, and just, just trying to get through each day uh, basically, you know, healthy. And, and unfortunately, we have not been doing that very well. We've got a bunch of guys banged up, and, mm -hmm. and that's all part of it. And, and, and we're hoping to, you know, hoping to get those guys back at some point as well. With the off season, as you've segued into getting ready for the season, which we would already have been in a few weeks into with a regular schedule, but with uh, some of the summer workouts limited, how how has everything changed the way not only you've had to work out with the guys, but how you kind of coach your staff and how you just look at things from a big picture view? Yeah, um, it, everything's changed. Um, you spent you know in the fall, you know we we were doing everything where we couldn't have contact. The players couldn't, you know, play one on one or two on two or three on three. It was all, you know, skill work, which is, you know, beneficial as well. Uh, but you got to be really strategic. Uh, also, they were, they were, had not done anything in seven months, so their conditioning was at an all time, you know, low or or just not good, and you know, not not a fault to them, just because of the situation. And so now you're dealing with not only are you trying to prepare them to play a season. You're just trying to prepare them to get in condition to, to, to try and avoid injury um, and, and to get themselves back in shape. And juggling all that is very, very difficult. Um, you know, we've done what we thought and it was, it was a, the best method, you know, we could. And then once they on practice, the first practice day, they let us start playing live. And then you got to manage all that, that stuff. How much do you go contact? How much do you condition? How much? And then unfortunately you get a bunch of guys that, that had little, nicks and bumps and some were worse than that. And, and then you're really concerned about every day because you, you obviously don't want your kids hurt. And, and, and that, that has been the biggest challenge along with dealing with all the mental stuff they have to deal with throughout this. So it, it's been challenging. So I want to talk about the guys that are, are coming back and we might touch on some new newcomers here in a second, but I, I've talked to different folks and they both told me the same thing about Max Fiedler, how he's improved. Uh, we know Quincy Olivari, the, the flashes he showed us last year, and you got a veteran now. Weird to say that about Chris Mullins, but uh, speak to the guys you do have coming back in, in the confidence you have in them and how, how they've improved, what you've seen from them. Well, I, I think all of them have improved in different aspects, which is always good. You know, um, the, the biggest thing with Max is he's, just, he's come back with a new level of, of confidence. Um, he's, he's learning to deal with his mistakes better. Um, he's understanding he's not going to be perfect every time he's in tremendous condition and, and he has been, uh, one of our most consistent performers. I mean, his ability to pass the ball and hit open players has been a lot of fun. I know the, the guys are having fun with it because you're starting to see guys cut a lot harder, uh, because they know they're going to get the ball, you know, Quincy, he's had a very up and down preseason, not because of his performance. He's been playing really well. just because of some things he's gone through on a personal levels, he, and a little injury he had he caused him to miss some time, but he's been back here the last week or so. He's been really good. He was tremendous in our, our little scrimmage. We had our blue white little thing we, we did on Saturday. And uh, so he's shown improvement as well. Also he's, he's excited to play uh, a tremendous uh, approach to his work ethic. And then Chris and Peyton now as juniors, you know, they kind of know, you know, the, the drill and you know, what we expect, how practices run, the things we're going to do, offensively and defensively, you know, both of them, Chris has really improved his decision-making um, has been, has been a lockdown defender, even to a, to a, to my point, to, to my mind, another level better than he was last year. And then Peyton, 
you know, is now as a junior with the ball in his hands and has an opportunity uh, to really impact uh, more so, even than he did the first two years, our ability to win and play well. So a lot of those guys will, will pick up the slack, but you lost 74% of your scoring. But on the other side of things, you've got eight newcomers. I know who you think a lot of. Um, so uh, w- what stands out as a whole? And uh, who are some of those that are the names uh, that fans will get used to? Uh, coming yeah, well, I can tell you what stands out. They're just, they're great kids. Um, they are, uh, you know, along with the guys we just mentioned, tremendous uh, representatives of, of this university and our basketball program. Um Great high, high high level workers. Uh, they care about about the program, and uh, and there's some good players in there. I mean, you know, Travis Evie, uh, transfer from VMI, who we're still waiting to see if his waiver gets approved to see if we'll have him next Friday or not. Uh, it's getting down the nitty gritty here. I, I'm hoping to hear this week. He has been really really good, uh, really good shooter, strong on ball defender. Um, you know, Riley Abercrombie uh, from Boise State. And a kid from Clear Lake here in Houston, he can really shoot. He'll he'll be one of those guys that can really space the floor for us. And then uh, Trey Clark and Ege uh, have have been tremendous. As the fifth year senior transfers, the grad students have been tremendous. Their ability to pass and share the ball and fit in with how we play, I think both of them could could really have have big years for us. Um, you know, and then you know the, the and we also have Malik right who sat out yeah. you know, last year and. And he's he can't wait to get started and get on the court and play. It's been a while, and so he he has a lot to offer and can really really help us in so many ways. Uh, the way he shoots the ball and defends, and you know he's he's got a, a really good uh, package to his game. The three freshmen, unfortunately, right now none of them are playing. Um, all three of them are banged up. Uh, Noah Hutchins is going to be out for the year with a hip injury. Melajo mm-hmm. Potit is out for an extended period of time with a stress fracture. And Cam Sheffield right now is nursing a little groin injury, which we're concerned about and getting an MRI on. So mm-hmm. all three of them would be contributing as well. You know, I, I really like the talent on the roster. I like the depth. I like the versatility. But again, how many? who's going to be playing next Friday night? I can't tell you right now. And I think that's probably uh, a lot of teams across the country, unfortunately. And the new news coming out for Conference USA in the last week or so was the new scheduling format with, uh, I guess, the last couple of weeks with the Friday and Saturday schedules. I know we'll talk about it as time draws near and you'll get tired of me asking you. I promise I'll stop after a while during the season. But but what's that do? Because you get, for those that don't know, you get one team in two days, no matter if you're on the home or, or road. So so what did y'all think of that? And I guess that minimizes a lot of the risk with the, the virus. Well, look, everybody's trying to do whatever we can to minimize, right? And 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 that's so. It's a smart maneuver, I, I think, by Conference USA. It's certainly a very challenging schedule we we inherited here, or we or we were given having our crossover games, you know, from the other side, you know, other side of the so-called league of being Western Kentucky, Old Dominion, and Marshall um, makes it extremely challenging. But the, as for the Friday Saturday. You know, I did it in the Ivy League. It wasn't against the same team, obviously, but so I have some basis of preparation of what it looks like. It's certainly going to be unique. <coughs> Excuse me, but we'll be prepared. Um, our guys will adjust, and uh, they're just happy to be playing. And so I'm just happy to be coaching, and hopefully we can get this uh, kicked off next Friday night uh, or next Friday afternoon down at Incarnate Word. Yes, sir. You know the drill. Uh, I've got football now, but I'll be with you hopefully for that opener and and a lot of other ones here in preseason. But I miss you, man. I can't wait to uh, stand six feet away. Yeah, and see you. I'm, I'm anxious to see you in person too, JP. And and uh, hopefully you can make it down there next Friday. And hopefully we're there and we're playing. Yes, that uh, that's a whole other podcast, Coach. Let's get these games in. Let's That's just the start there, day to day. Thank you, boss. Appreciate you. Thank you. Scott Perry, head coach of our Rice Owls. Stay tuned. Coming up, we'll preview those North Texas mean green here from Rice Owls Insider from Learfield IMG College. Have no post-game plans? You do now. Head down the street to Little Woodrow's in Rice Village and relax over indoor and outdoor games, sports, and drink specials that a college student cannot refuse. All you have to do is bring your student ID to enjoy $2.50 domestic drafts. Also, don't miss out on our Monday college nights as we've got $2 domestic drafts and $3 shots. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay updated on all our upcoming events and specials. Little Woodrow's, the official Rice Owls game day headquarters. 
Rice fans, need a place to stay while watching your owls play ball? Located just steps from campus is the Hilton Houston Medical Center. Visit us today at houstonplaza.hilton.com or call 713-313-4000 to get that special rice discount. Again, that's houstonplaza.hilton.com or call 713-313-4000 to get that special rice discount now. Football fans are passionate, just like John Deere fans. And if you're a John Deere person, the name to know is Shoppas. In football, it's about calling the right place. The right call for John Deere equipment is Shoppas. Shoppas has the right size track from the compact 1000 series all the way up to the 6000 series with financing available. Shoppas has great prices on lawnmowers and gators too. A John Deere is more affordable than you think. Google Shoppas at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Shoppas, all things John Deere. Welcome back to Rice Owls Insider. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Back on Rice Owls Insider, the great Dave Barnett to break down North Texas in a moment from his broadcast perch. A reminder that Rice House football is brought to you by Carbach Brewing Company, proudly brewed in Houston at 2032 Carbach Street. Carbach, it's crafted for serious fun. And rumor has it that we'll have a game Saturday at the great property <laughs> stadium. Uh, Dave Barnett, how are you doing, brother? Uh, I'm good. You know, um, I've tested negative all these weeks. So by that measure alone, I'm having a good fall. I wish I could say the same for every player and coach around the country. But yeah, the rumor is the first time in what will be five weeks, there will be North Texas football. Yeah, well, that's the obvious first place to start. What's it been like? What's Coach Latrell tried to do to keep some semblance of regularity since it's been over a month until it's late? Well, um, most of the cancellations have been announced late in the week. The last one was announced late Thursday afternoon, and the plan was to you know, fly to Birmingham the next day. So that was really a surprise. Uh, last week, I think he and everybody with the program were convinced that it's actually going to happen. And then UAB obviously got some bad numbers back from their tests. Um, the cancellation before that, I believe, was UTEP. All these cancellations are kind of running together. Understood. Um, uh, it was announced actually during our Tuesday night show at a local restaurant with Seth. We uh, had an inkling that it might have to be put off because that was the week where El Paso hospitals were at 100 percent capacity and they were having to um, use the convention center and some military facilities uh, as mass units, basically. So that one wasn't a huge shock. Um, North Texas offered to host the game and exchange, you know, a, a later road game with UTEP. But right now the plan is to make it up at uh, the high school stadium in Midland early in December. So that one was not so much a surprise, but what he's tried to do is prepare with game plans as if games should happen on Saturday. Now they've got game plans, you know, in the vault for when and if these games actually come off. He's done more scrimmaging than probably he's ever done during a season best on best just to keep the competition level high keep everybody's interest um, at 100%. So it's, you know, it's it's like every other program in the country. It's day-to-day, and a lot of days it's hour-to-hour, hour knowing whether there's going to be an actual game um, on the following Saturday. But as we speak, it looks like this, this game is good and it will actually happen. Yeah, and – Full disclosure, with Andy Everett, I did the same thing. And with Teddy Allen of the La Tech Broadcaster, I did the same thing. So hopefully we can shake this uh, broadcast side of things. But I saw y'all play against HBU, and obviously you've got the explosive offense. And the numbers against uh, Charlotte, I guess it was, started to kind of prove that. But with Ani at quarterback, and obviously Darden is a well-known commodity across the league, just, just first on the offense, has is, is that kind of been billed as advertised? And how's that look? Because I know you played a couple of quarterbacks. It's been better than expected. Um, last year, May's senior year, the numbers dipped a little bit for a variety of reasons, injuries being one of them. And so the big question coming into this year was quarterback. You know, how do you replace the most productive quarterback in the history of the program? Well, 
Jason Bean started the first two games. Asanati, the next two, Jason didn't get off the bench. But one of those games was, in fact, the HBU game, school record single game total offense. First game ever, 300 yards rushing and passing. Then um, there were big deficits that uh, caused the offense to constantly and come from behind mode against SMU, against Southern Miss, against Charlotte. And then now five weeks ago, or almost the last game we were going to see, another big early deficit, 21-7, to early second quarter. Austinati turned it over three times, entered Jason Bean, and uh, that ended up breaking the – four-week-old record for single-game total offense, 768 yards, first game ever, 400 rushing yards, 300 passing. Wow. Jason Bean came in. He's a 10-3 sprinter in the 100-yard dash, 6'3", um, and is, I think, just now realizing what a weapon he can be with his legs. He had 169 yards rushing on 10 carries. Two of them were 48-yard touchdowns. Gets in the open field. No one is ever going to run him down. Passing has been probably better than expected. Asanati is not the running threat, um, but he has been the leading passer in terms of yards per game in Conference USA. One of the top four in the country, 16.2 yards per completion. So the, the biggest difference is downfield passing. Um, very little dinking and dunking. Uh, and Jason Jalen Darden is um, the head of a very deep receiving core. And at this point, He's got to be the Bullet Nikoff Award winner. Um, he's played half as many games as some receivers in the country, and he still leads the nation with 10 touchdown catches in five games. Nine catches per game, 138 yards, two touchdowns. That's his average game. He's become much more of a downfield threat, uh, 15 yards per catch. That's almost double what he was um, averaging last year. So, so the offense is that, and then a deep stable of running backs. Um, Trey Siggers was the incoming starter based on last year. Oscar Attaway, redshirt freshman, started with 200 games, broke his hand in practice. And it turns out uh, he's been able to heal without missing more than one game. Uh, so he should be good to go. Um, DeAndre Torrey is a senior, is extremely productive at Middle Tennessee game, 300 yard rushers and a 200 yard receiver in, in Darden. And I've asked around, I've gone as far as the CBS first research staff, and I've never heard whether that's ever happened before in the history of college football. So as far as I can determine, that's the first game in college football history with 300 yard rushers and a 200 yard receiver. Wow. Yeah, that's the big worry on on the Rice defensive side that, that Coach Bloomgren even talked about earlier this week respecting uh, you guys' offense. Now, flip sides to the defense, um, while, while they've given up over 40 points per game, I know there are still some strong suits of that. So what's the kind of story of the defense been? Because I know there's still a lot of familiar names on that defense. The story of the defense has been that side has been really hit much harder than the offense um, by – factors in the pandemic um and the only game where they really looked the way they expected to look all season was middle tennessee and that was after falling behind 21 to 7 one of those touchdowns though was a, a sack fumble return so it wasn't on the defense but the last three quarters of that game they really um were able to with most of the players they expected to have all year play the style they want to have aggressive Man-to-man, Clinton came in from Kansas, new defensive coordinator. And his plan was uh, to simplify things and make um, the, the game plan be based on abandon and aggressiveness and not so much thinking about assignments. There were so many missing, uh, including the top two linebackers, uh, K.D. Davis and Tyreek Davis, for a good part of the year. They haven't been able to blitz much. They just basically tried to um, get off the field as quickly as they could. Um, But they were giving up big numbers, huge early deficits. Even despite falling down early at middle of the sea, they were able to come from behind and and really control things the last three quarters. So uh, the Rice game will be a test because they have pretty much everybody back. I don't think there's anybody who's expected to be a frontliner who won't be available as we speak. And uh, they'll be a good challenge, you know, with the power run.
that game that that rice things um so it's yeah it's been uh lots are very heavily uh dominated by the offense and the defense now hopefully will be able to um uh, get off the field quicker and shoulder more of the load than they have in the first five games. He's the great Dave Barnett. Another day I might talk ticket or Rangers with him, but now he's a great granddad, and I'll hopefully get to this bump you or be at six feet distance <laughs> on Saturday. A beautiful apogee, okay? Thank you, Dave. Appreciate you. I'm just a granddad. I'm not that old. I'm not a great granddad. Well, yeah, I meant as an adjective. You know, as I'm, an adjective. Okay, yes. I'm great at being a granddad. I, I try to be, yes. Thank you. I'm not the pilot podcaster of, of my uh, <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Right. Really appreciate it. Always enjoy the chat. Appreciate it. Stay tuned, here. Stay tuned here on Rice House Inside. I'll wrap up the show right after this from Learfield IMG College. The members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 716 built the things that make Rice University and Houston great, and we want you to join us. Build a better career. To find out more, visit IBEW716.net. Time out. Smart Financial wants you to know that a good banking experience shouldn't feel like you're getting tackled. Since 1934, we have prided ourselves on providing hassle-free services with a game plan that focuses on people, not profits. If you live, work, or go to school at or around Rice University, visit smartcu.org to join our family and become a part of the winning team. Smart Financial, proud sponsor of Rice Athletics, federally insured by the NCUA. The Wyndham Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the Medical Center, the Museum District, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the Medical Center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Wyndham Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon. And if you need a group rate or need 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. That will do it for another edition of Rice Owls Insider. Please remember that a big help is subscribing on your favorite podcast app. We aim for these to be out each Wednesday for your listening pleasure, getting geared up for game week. In this case, basketball season nigh upon us coming up. We're also on YouTube as well. And big thanks to IBEW Local 716 for being our title sponsor here for Rice Owls Insider. Rice in North Texas coming up Saturday. Uh, cross your fingers. Nate and I will be on air at 1230 with the Houston Methodist Hospital pregame show from Denton Americana. One o'clock kick from Apogee right up there with my favorite press boxes in the league. But our coverage is on ricehouse.com, the TuneIn app, and the aviary with the uh, in-booth feed as well. And don't forget about Rice Owls Sports Show. That's the new Rice Athletics TV feature uh, presented by Smart Financial. A unique perspective of the athletes who compete for the Owls in 14 sports. Some of the great moments in Rice's rich sports history are chronicled too. AT&T Sportsnet Southwest is the home of the Astros and the Rockets with a coverage region throughout Texas as well as Arkansas, Louisiana and Oklahoma. Thanks to Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach Mike Bloomgren. Thanks to Tina Langley, Scott Perra, and the great Dave Barnett. Have a great rest of this day or night, depending on when you're listening. God bless. Go Owls. We'll talk to you Saturday from Denton, and stay tuned later on for another edition of Rice Owls Insider. Rice Fight. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield IMG College, you've been listening to Rice Owls Insider. Powered by IBEW Local 716. Lighting up Rice University in Houston for over 100 years. Rice Owls Insider was brought to you by The Parking Spot. We have airport parking covered. The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation on the Rice Sports Network.